If you're someone who wants to work out but just can't do it, or when you do work out, it doesn't work the way that you want to, it might be because of some unhelpful myths that many of us have come to believe around exercise. So, much like a drill sergeant to his troops in the barracks at the crack of dawn, we are going to debunk these myths. Troops sleep in bunk beds, that's it's a really forced pun, I'm sorry. I only started working out about four years ago on a regular basis. I don't know if you can tell the difference. I actually believed a lot of the exercise myths we're going to talk about today, but since then I have unlearned them thanks to me and my trainer Nathaniel and the app Trainwell. Thank you to Trainwell for sponsoring this video. They used to be called Copilot. They changed the name to differentiate themselves from many of the new AI chatbot apps called Copilot. The new name underscores their commitment to human-led training, emphasizing the value of human connection and the expertise of their outstanding trainers. Their core services and their trainers remain the same. Nathaniel's been giving me workouts for four years through the app and it's been incredibly helpful. I don't even have to think about the exercises I'm doing. And you can try it out for free for 14 days plus $25 off your first month if you're one of the first 100 people to click the link below. Or scan the QR code if you're more of a scanny type person. Anyway, I had a conversation with Nathaniel debunking these myths. I'm gonna do a workout while I talk to you. <laughs> First myth, no pain, no gain. Does it have to hurt to be worth it? It actually doesn't. Some people like the idea of pain because of movies like Rocky. They have to struggle and they have to hate. So I think this depends on what you mean by pain. I think a lot of people might mean for this to be more motivational, to get over mental pain. You gotta do tough things to make it in life. You talk in a low voice and make a fist with your hand and go like this. Can't make an omelet without cracking some eggs. Can't mix a salad without julienne and some peppers. Anyway, it's a way to psych yourself up and expect things to be hard, but do it anyway. And it always works. Work. You'll eventually hit a wall with that, right? If you know that tomorrow you have a busy day at work, but also tomorrow you have a really hard workout, the workout's gonna fall. It's gonna be the one that you let go. Yeah, he's probably right. And setting things up to expect pain can lead to some problems depending on the pain. You could be doing things wrong or- Or there may be underlying conditions. You gotta watch out for that. I don't though. When we first started, you had some shoulder issues. Oh yeah, right, right, right. I had shoulder impingement, which I could have easily thought was part of the process because no pain, no gain. But thankfully I had Nathaniel there. Well, we made sure that we did enough to warm you up so that those weren't a problem. He showed me this stretch that really helped. But there's another kind of pain that to me seems inevitable. The pain that most people feel after the workout, the late onset muscle soreness or like DOMS, that's not necessarily the only sign that your legs got a good workout. It's a pain that always seems to happen when I first start a new workout or if I delay working out for a while and then I come back to it after a long lazy session. According to my Googlings, DOMS was thought to be caused by a buildup of lactic acid but now it's believed to be microscopic tears in the muscles. Anytime I've started a new exercise routine, I have always experienced some level of down. To me, it seems unavoidable. It's something you have to experience, right, Nathaniel? You don't have to. <laughs> you really want to just make sure that you're doing the movements correctly and that you're moving in a full range of motion. It's yeah. harder than like a warm up, but it's not so hard that you can't move. And if you do it that way, you won't start off with pain. You're less likely to get injured and you're more likely to have like more leftover for the next day so that you can exercise again. All right, maybe it's not inevitable if you're less of a brute on your body like I am. Regardless, after the initial downs, it is not an experience that's required to make progress. And after a while, it actually just goes away in my experience. Until I do a new intense exercise, beating myself up again. All right, to summarize, no pain, no gain might be a good motivator in order to get through some hard work and achieve your goal of defeating Ivan Drago in a boxing match and defending America for Mother Russia. But you don't need actual physical pain to make progress. And sometimes that pain is a sign of something going wrong. Next myth. Lifting weights will make you bulky. That is definitely a myth. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying lifting weights will make you bulky from perfect strangers. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah, you can't bulk up without working out, but just because you work out, it doesn't mean you're going to turn into John Cena. Believing this myth can be a problem in two ways. I think there are people who want that and are disappointed when they don't get it, and then there are people yeah. who don't want that so they don't work out. Right. <laughs> I never really cared about being Mr. Muscle Guy, and so I thought, well, that working out's not for me, but that's not... <laughs> how you should think about working out. If you start working out expecting to become the rock, you may get discouraged because you're gonna discover that it's harder than you expected. There's a very large difference between getting stronger and building muscle. They're not the same system. Most people aren't just gonna go all muscle in a year. It takes a whole lot of discipline and a whole lot of time. You would have to be eating like 3,000 calories a day. You would be eating a laughable amount of protein. <laughs> but in most cases, you would have to be working out twice a day. So if someone does a reasonable amount of working out but sees little visual result, they might quit despite being twice as strong as they were last year, but you wouldn't even be able to tell by just looking at them. So believing that working out is gonna send you straight to bulk town is a problem, 
because either you want muscles and it's not working, so you're gonna quit. You don't want all those weird muscle bubbles all over your body, so you never start. But this ignores all the other benefits of working out, such as weight loss. If you're building more muscle, your body is like processing the calories better that you're eating. Insulin issues. Most people who have insulin resistance, they're typically told that they should exercise and lift weights. Just being more capable. Like most people who work out, they're just like, I want to be able to carry my daughter up the stairs without my back hurting. Yeah, even if they don't have a daughter, which is weird. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and other benefits I'm not gonna get into. I'm not your doctor. Moving on. Cardio is best for weight loss. I get this question a lot. Okay, so cardio, running, swimming, biking, getting that heart going so that you burn off some calories. In theory, you burn more calories, you're gonna lose weight. Let's not complicate it. Simple, simple, simple dimple. You have to think about like what weight loss means to you. Okay, let's complicate it. For some people, they wanna look slimmer and for some people, weight loss is the number going down. So he's drawing a distinction between losing all the mass inside you, the fat, but also the muscle, the number going down and the other way, losing just the fat, losing that belly, but not necessarily muscle, maybe increasing the muscle. Muscle tends to be more dense than fat, so you're, you probably aren't gonna have the number go down. It might even go up. If we're just talking purely about the number going down, the most important thing you can do is having a consistent diet. And then number two is if you don't care about like how much muscle you have, yes, cardio is good, but probably not the cardio you think. You should be walking. I mean, you've done this several times where you have 10,000 steps a day, 30,000 steps a day, and not doing high intensity cardio. Why not do high intensity? cardio. The reason is somewhat simple. So say you're running every day, your hunger signals are going to change and you're going to start eating more food. So unless yeah. you're like extremely disciplined, you're going to have to fight against that. And then eventually your body's going to get really efficient with how much running you're doing. And you're either going to have to increase the intensity to continue to hit the same level of burning calories, or that's going to plummet and your hunger signals are still going to be here. Now you're eating more food than you were before and your body's more efficient with the uh, running. So running makes you hungry, which makes your body more efficiently utilize the calories to give you more energy, which means you got to really fight the hunger pains or do more running. Gah! But all this also happened when I did the 30,000 step walking challenge. What gives, Nathaniel? If that's your real name. When I did the 20,000 steps and it was the easiest time I ever had losing weight. I've lost five pounds. And then I did the 30,000 steps today video and I didn't lose any weight. And I just got really hungry and I, I just ate. What you hit with that 30,000 steps is about the same that you would get if you were just trying to like do high intensity cardio. I'm burning calories, but now I'm like, I wanna eat everything in the house. So if all you care about is the number going down, Nathaniel says, work on your diet and start walking. But if you wanna lose fat, but not muscle. And you're trying to like maintain the weight loss, weightlifting is probably the best thing you can do. When you weightlift, you build more muscle. And Speaking your body, of, yeah. Your, yeah. Your muscles demand more calories to be burned to stay the same, which can lead to you burning more calories, basically just existing. Muscles burn more calories. Well, then it stands to reason that you can eat anything if you exercise. Is that a myth? Oh yeah. Damn it. I like to use the analogy of the high school kid that doesn't have to study. There are some people who are just naturally gifted. Me. When they hit college, you have to have study plans and have plans to get homework done or you'll fail out of college. That's what it's like whenever you just try to exercise away a bad diet. To a certain extent, you can do a ton of exercise and your body will be able to maintain. But the older we get, the harder that is. Eventually, you'll hit a point where no amount of extra workout is going to burn off the tacos and the donuts and the cake that you may have had. <laughs> Next myth comes from a Redditor on the Beard Lovers subreddit. You will learn to enjoy it. Exercise regularly and you'll soon start to enjoy it. Nope, it's gonna <laughs> pain and sweat and misery for me. I have several clients who hate working out. Okay, listen. <sighs> Time to get real with you. <laughs> this chair is not made for this. My butt's way over here. I'm gonna get real with you. <clears throat> Some people will start to work out, not like it, but then eventually learn to like it. Some people are never gonna like it. What do we do about that? Well, the good news is you don't have to do 30 minutes of strength training a day to get there. We can get there other ways. We can find something that you do enjoy. I go for walks almost every morning and I play Pokemon <laughs> as I go for my little walk. You love riding your bike and it's summertime, you're gonna be outside on your bike all the time. That's really good, but we need to make sure that we're strengthening your core, your mid back, or that's gonna eventually become a problem that limits you from being able to ride your bike all the time. But I think it's important that you try to maintain as well-rounded workout program as possible, which you didn't use train well for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's a good opportunity to listen to podcasts, music, watch TV. I'm halfway through season two of The Bear because I've been watching while working out. It's pretty good. Season one was really stressful. They've kind of
kind of mellowed out in season two, but it's still got some drama and, and comedy, and I like it. But look, none of this might be for you. I've talked about this in another video, and I reference another video within that video. It's about to get real Inception-y here, so just bear with me. Came across this video by a fitness guy named Jordan Syatt. Say In life, there are two forms of suffering. Willful suffering, unwillful suffering. As you get older, things get harder. We're gonna suffer regardless. Do we want to control it? I think willful suffering is better than unwillful suffering. I want to suffer my way. Yeah! Mm. Speaking of getting older, age limits your ability to get fit. I hope not. Age definitely comes with some limitations, but it doesn't limit your ability to get fit. It limits your fitness ceiling. As you get older, your bone density changes. Mobility may change based on like your lifestyle. And there are certainly people, 70s, 80s, who are in better shape than people who are in their teens. I am in much better shape now at 43 than I was at 27. I'm happy with how strong 39 year old Nathaniel is. <laughs> I have a lady who I used to work out with in the gym, 64 at the time. I could tell that she felt a little, little intimidated using the weights. But one day I, I remember her looking up after she finished her sets of a bench press and she was like, I'm stronger than everyone in here. This guy's been sitting on his phone the whole time. He's done like one or two sets of bench press and he's using less weight. That's because you've been consistent. Like you've been showing up. It snuck up on me like, like, oh, I actually have muscles now. Wow, I wasn't even. <laughs> hey, why is the studio audience laughing? I got muscle. Come on. All right, moving on. You need a gym membership to get fit. Ah, well, I know this one's not true. You definitely do not. You don't need weights. Your body is typically enough of a resistance. All the gym typically does is makes it easier to hit more muscle groups, but you can definitely get in shape without it. And a lot of people pay for a gym membership and don't go to the gym. I have never done a workout in a gym, so I might like it in theory, but it would just be too inconvenient for me. So that's the benefit of having stuff at home. It's like, it takes out one extra variable. And you can watch TV, listen to music without headphones. It's nice. I yeah, it is very exercise nice. naked if I want to, I don't. <laughs> So there you go. Those are some myths. If any of those have kept you from starting your exercise journey, well, I hope I uh, helped you get over that. Guys, I really do want to help you. Do you see the backwards hat? Also, another big thank you to Trainwell and Nathaniel. They have literally helped me transform my physical body and my figurative body. I think way differently about working out now, and I can work out so easily without thinking about it because they just make the workouts for me. I'm never going to stop now, and that's thanks to you. I'm never going to stop either, but I want to be the a 70 year old athlete who's still like running a 200 meter dash at like 23 <laughs> seconds like that's what i want to be <laughs> i just want to be someone who can who can carry myself around when i'm really old you yeah. know also a reminder be one of the first 100 people to sign up with my train well link below and you get 14 days free and 25 dollars off your first month be on the lookout for the next video in which my mom shows me how she makes her amazing spaghetti it's my favorite meal of all time anywhere you can support me on patreon click the like and subscribe and stuff youtube thinks you'll like that video and okay Oh, yeah.